One week before the deadline, Matt Holliday has been traded to the Cardinals for three prospects. Holliday, a free agent following the season, comes to St. Louis after hitting 286, 11 home runs in Oakland. He was in the Cardinals lineup tonight in Philly, playing left field. The batting cleanup will show you how he did in just a moment. Baseball tonight alert right now. The Giants and the Rockets, a huge end of the Giants. In the, the, the end of what has been a tough road trip so far for them. Kung Fu Panda! Look at Panda Ball. The toughest thing to do from a left-handed hitter is to field that ground ball because it runs away from the infielder. He picks it clean, and man, he's quick. Rays and Jays, here's how it ended. Here was the play that decided it anyway. 2-2 two -two in the 10th. Evan Longoria, Joe England! No! It scores two, and the Rays end up winning 4-2 in 10 this, in Toronto. This was after Roy Halladay came out to a standing ovation. Yes, sir. Joe Inglis, an infielder playing outfield. Moments ago at Miller Park in Milwaukee, Chipper Jones, 4-4, top six, unties it as 12th, and the Braves. The hot Braves, baby. Man, Chipper Jones, that's strong. Chipper's 12th of the year, Ryan Braun is homework for the group group as well. Welcome to the broadcast. It's baseball tonight with you for the hour here on ESPN up until 11 o'clock Eastern time when it's Sports Center. Steve Berthume along the way joined by Fernando Vina, Orestes Destrada, and Buster only. There is, let's see, we got it up. There it is, the trade deadline clock. We are now six oh, days. we got a clock. Counting. Yeah, we got a clock like on the whole trade deadline. It's coming up next week. Six We're all days on the clock. Away. We are all, well, we all are <laughs> no. in more ways than one, believe me. Exactly. Uh, hello. <laughs> Matt Holliday, as we just mentioned, has been traded. One of the big pieces at this trade deadline. He goes from the A's to the Cardinals. Here he is before the game tonight. I feel very blessed to be back, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a pennant race and a great team and a great organization. And, and uh, obviously, I'm very thankful for my time in Oakland. And, and those guys were great. And, and I had a lot of special relationships with teammates now. And uh, but I'm excited to be here and excited to be back in the National League and, and part of a pennant race. Well, it's a heck of a move for our club. I mean, the guys are excited. Uh, coaches, I'm excited. Everybody involved with our team, and I'm sure. Our fans, um, I take a good indication of the team that he's joining. There are guys that are going to lose some at bats because he's with us, and they're excited. <laughs> so here is Matt Holliday wearing number 15, one of the new Cardinals in that lineup, playing left field, batting cleanup. Jim Edmonds' old jersey. After uh, Pujols and in front of Ludwig, top two scoreless. Pedro Feliz can't barehanded. Holiday has a single. And don't forget about this guy's speed, by the way. There it is. He's back in the National League. He's That's another sports. element he brings to this ball club. He does. He, he's a five-tool player. Holiday on third. Later in the inning, he comes in on this Rick Ankiel base hit. It's one nothing. Holiday's got a hit, a steal, and a run. And Rick, nice and Rick Ankiel faced the only lefty in that lineup, and he makes Tony Lewis look very, very good. 48-minute rain delay in Philly. Holiday was in Manhattan with the A's. They were playing the Yankees. When he heard about the trade, he took the train from Manhattan to Philly to meet his new Cardinal teammates there. Ryan Howard, Matt Holiday at the wall can't quite get there, and Ryan Howard is on second base. Tough, tough play. When you get traded over to another team, obviously you play the next day. Your nerves, you're a little excited. You try to do too much, that's all it was. Just a little nerves. Sixth inning. Pujols at the plate. Holiday is in the on deck circle. And again, this is going to be the formula. Do you pitch to Pujols with Holiday on deck here? Gets a fastball in, so he's going to get the fastballs. He knows that. That's what good hitters do. They jam shot over the second baseman's head. That's how you cover the whole field. First and second. Here's Holiday. It's another blue. DeRosa scores. Pujols to third. It's 2 nothing. Good, good hit. And that's what you do. Instead of trying to pull the ball and roll it over to ground ball to shortstop, you stay behind it. Here's flip the it into formula right field. again. Tyler Walker in the seventh. Very careful with Pujols. Walks him on four pitches, and now here comes Holiday, and here you go. Right center. Victorino can't track it down. Pools to third. Holiday has a double. In talking with scouts who saw him earlier this week, they said this is the best he's looked all year. He's gone back to doing what he did in Colorado in the past, and you wonder if those recent scouting reports might have been a difference maker as St. Louis made a decision whether or not to make the trade for him. First game, Keel to third. Feliz can't get it. It's 7-0 Cardinals. Julio Lugo. Brother. Gone. Has just homered for the Cardinals. Former Red Sox great Julio Lugo. And let's see. Playing second base and leading off just hit a home run. Uh, uh, two RBIs for Mark DeRosa. Three hits for Holiday. Julio Lugo, a couple of hits. Three hits, I think, and a home run. You All know who had the guys. best, a great day? Uh, John Mos Mos Mosley. Oh, yeah. The yep. GM. Oh. Those are all trades within the last few weeks. And as we mentioned, Holiday here playing left field and batting cleanup behind Pujols with Ryan Ludwig in the five-hole. Julio Lugo, uh, the new second baseman, at least uh, for tonight anyway, with a lefty J. Happ on the mound for the Phillies. So, pretty impressive debut here for number 15. No question. And this deal came together quickly, guys. The Athletics had been talking with the Tigers about a possible deal. <laughs> And as they were in the midst of those conversations, they checked back with the Cardinals, who they'd been talking to a lot about, uh, about Holiday. And the question was, would the Cardinals ever put Brett Wallace in the deal? Well, 
This week, the Cardinals stepped up and they said, yes, we're ready to talk about Wallace and other players. Now, the Cardinals don't have a lot of money to spend, so they got to about a $1.5 million in cash to offset some of what Holiday is going to make for the rest of the year. The Athletics get, of course, Brett Wallace, one of the top offensive young corner infielders in the minor leagues. So it works out well for both teams. There's no talk about an extension yet. Holiday's a free agent at the end of the year. They'll worry about that sometime in October. Wallace is a big kid, 6'2", 205. Let's take a look, in fact, at the entire deal now. And we go back from a quick A's perspective, Buster. We said, well, Billy Bean wants Matt Holiday. You know, if they're in the race at the deadline, they can keep him. If they're not, they can, you know, trade him and get something back. It appears to have worked out for both teams, as you mentioned. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, you think about two weeks ago, this looked like this was going to be a difficult situation for Oakland because Holiday... As we mentioned, a free agent at the end of the year. In order to get the two draft picks in compensation, they would have had, had to have offered them arbitration. That probably wasn't going to happen. But you know what? Holiday got hot right at the right time, hitting about 330 for the month of July. This increases trade value. They get good return on it. So in the end, what Billy Bean's strategy pays off. You look at the players they get. Brett Wallace, as we say, is the key to this deal. Shane Peterson is a nice young outfielder that they've been taking a look at. Clayton Mortensen, right-handed pitcher. This for an Oakland team that's now beginning to build again toward 2010 around that great young pitching staff. So Billy Bean, okay, in June, early July, this didn't look like it was going to work out. But today, it did. Fernando, you played in St. Louis. I know you talked to Tony La Russa earlier today. What does he have to say? Well, I mean, he's, he's excited. He really wanted Matt Holliday. And, I mean, protecting Albert is a huge responsibility. I could not think of a better guy to do it than Matt Holliday. He has been protect, protected in Colorado for so many years. So to put this guy in this lineup behind or in front of Albert Pujols is going to be huge. He has a tremendous approach at the plate. He'll hit the ball the other way. He'll pull it. He can run. He'll steal a base. He is just a gamer. And what it does for the Cardinals, you wonder, can they sign him? Can they keep him there long term? Because he can be a free agent. You think about the city of St. Louis. I remember Mark McGuire, myself, Jim Edmonds. The biggest thing that kept us there is that the, the knowledgeable fans, the way they treat you, they treat you like gold. They're, they're so good to you. Not only the fans, but the security guards, the cook, the, the parking attendant. I mean, everything is so, so good, and they make you feel like home. And when your family comes in, the kids, your mom and dad, everybody gets treated so well. So that is why it's so tough to leave the place, and I think it'll be a great place for Matt Holliday. It's a great point. He's a free agent after this season. Is there a scenario where maybe he decides he likes it enough to stay long term? It's possible, but remember, he's a Scott Boris client. He's probably going to test all of his options. One thing the Cardinals did know, Matt Holliday rakes in their park. He's hitting about 378 for his career. Very comfortable there, and he'll have a lot of guys on base in front of him, especially Pujols hitting third. And, and you can also add this thing, too, about a Cardinals team that all of a sudden uh, has been, you know, you know, looked like they didn't have any offense. Remember? In just a while, other than all purpose, you know, that all P, uh, Albert Pujols, they had, you know, nobody was hitting. But all of a sudden, Ryan Ludwood's been turning it, turning the corner a little bit. You add a monster like Matt Holliday. Mark DeRosa just came off the DL after he'd just been, you know, traded for. And then you, you got Troy Gloss, who's just, you know, soon to be coming off uh, a, a rehab stint. Now they're a powerful team coming to the to the front there in the NL Central. That oh, changes for me. Team to beat, real guys. Team to beat? I, for me, it's a team to beat because you have Carpenter, Kyle Loge, Pinero, Adam Wainwright. I mean, these start is, starting pitching is, is as good as it gets in the Central. And then you got Ryan Franklin in the back end that has been lights out. We'll talk later in this program with Buster about exactly what the other teams in the National League Central need to do now to keep pace with the St. Louis Cardinals. That would include the Houston Astros, who have made a nice run here just to force the swept St. Louis in Houston. They had a a home game against Johan Santana on the Mets. El Caballo goes down and gets one. This ties it at one. Hit it out to center field the same way he pitched it, nice and slow. Let's look at this at bat. Jeff Keppinger here. One, two count, bottom four. Fouls it off. Next one, a little upstairs. So he wants to do that with the high fastball. That's a low fastball. Trying to change your eyesight right now. That's change true. up. Now he battles off two more here. Up. Hanging in there against Johan. Here's another foul. Fastball. And then finally, he gets one that he can do something with. 3 2 2 outs. There it is. It's a double by Jeff Keppinger and a nice at bat against Santana. And you know what, guys? That at bat was demo demonstrated something about Santana in the last few starts. His velocity has been down a yeah. little. He's had a harder time finishing off at First pitch to the next batter. It's pitcher Mike Hampton. And there it is. Two, it's 3 1 Astros. Stump the host. Career homers, Mike Hampton. 7 15. 16. Wow. 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 Fernando. Nice. He can hit. Jeff Frank Court. Michael Bourne. Michael Bourne can't make the catch. Castillo scores to tie it. We go bottom five now. Here's Chris Coast. New Astro facing Johan. 
coast, left center. He's going to have to get a lot of bats now with Burke. And there you the are. Field. I mean, really, if you look at it, 90 mile an hour fastball, that, that's not a normal fastball for Johan Sante. It needs to be around 93 or 94 to differentiate the 82 mile an hour change. And this, this changeup is so good, and you, got, you see these hitters going gap to gap. That's the way you got to approach a guy like Johan Santana. Hits just keep on coming for the Mets. John Maine's going to get a second opinion on his shoulder. Could be out for the rest of the year. Yeah, they're ten and a half back in the NL East. Astros begin tonight. Only a game and a half out in the NL Central after winning eleven a good hit. of their last fifteen. <laughs> Have a baseball it's a bad hit. alert. We go to the nation. Jonathan Papelbon. Guess what? A thirty pitch ninth inning fiasco. Bases wow. loaded. Three two two outs. He gets Melvin Mora. Easy. Jonathan Papelbon, every save is a. It's a. It wasn't I, I don't even have a long year. I have the words, I just can't. Hey, one it. and you're in half two, nothing. That's no in your home park. Girls there. I'm telling you, Papelbon. Stop he, it. You can't keep it up. We can't have it all. All right, Cubs and Brewers will run down the rest of the night of the NL Central and see what other teams in the division have to do to keep up with the Cardinals who made the big move. Will Roy Halladay be the next big move? There's a week to go. How close are the Blue Jays and Phillies to a deal for the Toronto Ace? And who is the best number five of our all time? Our Hall of Fame by the Number series continues. We are back in 60 seconds, one minute away. Hang in. 30 Eastern time with NASCAR and Countdown. Baseball tonight alert for on Safeco Field, the Mariners. Here's Ichiro. Down one nothing. Top three. Look at Ichiro. Go get it. Running out of real estate. Ichiro. Let me hear that. Ichiro. Indians lead one nothing. Bottom three. Safe going for the Mariners. Here's the Braves. Miller Park, Milwaukee up 5 4 in the eighth. Nate McLeod. Bang is 15. Now it's 7 4. Something to think about. The Braves with all that great starting pitching. Now three and a half games out in the wild card race. Tell you what, the Brewers, Chipper, and McLeod have homeward for the Braves. They've been playing great defense and offensively. They've all come on really strong. No you know Escobar's hot. No one was nastier than Justin Verlander Friday. 99 there, then 82 here with 13 inches of break. The now hammer. You, now you're thinking, all right, is he going to throw me 100 or is he going to throw me 83? Change up. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, because when you add a, a, a circle change like that, where he turns over to the curveball and the 100 mile an hour fastball. And he fastball. goes back to the, uh, from 83 to 99. He got no shot. Throw it in, he'll throw it out, he'll drop the hammer, and he'll drop the combo. Forget it. Java, a little slide piece. And Java has got it back right now, brother. He's got the slider working, he's got the fastball where he wants to spot it. That's demeanor. Now, yeah, he's got, got a little back. spin. I like the spin he does there. Nobody fires. Nobody throws the the old soup Campbell screwball anymore. Daniel, Daniel Herrera. Herrera About five, just bringing five. it back. Yeah, the little guy getting it done. Roy Halladay, 81 mile an hour breaking ball here. Oh, just right off. You know what he gives you too, and I don't know if you ever faced El Presidente, Dennis yes. Martinez. But he gives you that little shake with his yes. with his glove. That wind up. That, that wind up ball thing. there and hides the, the ball. Look at all the movement on the Carlos Marmol slide piece here. And the tough part there, you see how he goes to the side. In on a his left. body goes to the side and he runs that cutter in on you. Wow. Woo. We talked about Jonathan Papelbon driving the nation crazy. Driving he's, you crazy. These bases loaded situations are where he does his best work. He's not effective until he loads the bases and puts the go-ahead <laughs> on base. Then he's lights out. Hey, he's faced eight hitters with the bases loaded this year. He's allowed no hits and struck out seven of those eight. His agent might use that in arbitration one time. Dude, the guy's great with the bases loaded. Can you loaded. just one, one, two, three inning? Just maybe one time? You gotta keep that arm in shape, Bird. You gotta kill oh, some pitch. No, no, he's, but seriously, he's gonna be tired at the end of the year from all these 35 pitch innings. All right, let's go to the gems. These are the early nominees here. Scott Feldman, and we saw this, the Derek Jeter barehanded jump throw off the mound. That's the sweet play. The short, quick step to get to the ball, and then he's able to get his body out of the way and flip all in one motion. Very well, nice. Threw it off his back foot there, too. Yeah. Nice athletic. athletic. Nick Markakis in the nation. Dustin Pedroian to Ryan Field. Markakis coming up throwing. They're going to wave Jacoby Ellsbury and watch the block by rookie phenom Matt Wieters at the plates. That's oh that's my. how it's done, right? I don't and know. As Buck, Buck Showalter always says, with the catcher, let the ball come to you. Because if that's you move right. up to get you that throw, up. you take yourself out of position. And it's a lot quicker when you let it travel. The ball travel. Don't go get it and bring it Troy back. on the wrong end of a web gem here. He is the web gem. Look at that. That ball's behind him, and he gets himself to his feet so quick. That's what makes him so good. Look how quick he's to his feet, ready to throw. The impressive wow. thing about the number two web gem here from Mark Reynolds in foul ground is that he is able with his body to cover that entire first row of seats yeah. at Chase Field in Arizona. He's got this thing covered from railing all the way to aisle. And he's fearless. He doesn't care about a bruise, a bad knee, whatever. No. He's going to get it. And he's done this before, just recently. He, he did a play like this. So. Who, who had the number one web gem yesterday? 
Dwayne Wise. Dwayne Wise. Who has the number one wedge gem today? I'm guessing Dwayne Wise. Look at this. Look at all the uh, Curtis Granderson center field at Comerica. And it's just like the play Thursday where he's way in Covered shallow. A lot of covers ground. all that ground going back. And here he is, only this time to the other hand. From now, one Mark center fielder Simon, to another. Who's running the web gems. He has to decide, does Dwayne Wise get extra points? For that Simon the is our web. Mark Simon, our web gem points czar. Late what web gem nominee for Mark ball Simon. Ball Simon, ball check this out. Here's the O-Dog. Wow, the O-Dog. You see how he kept his eye on the ball the whole time? He never took his eye off the ball because that ball was very shallow. Very nice job. Body control. That does it for this edition of Baseball Tonight. We're back at midnight Eastern for the half hour for Buster Only, Arrested Estrada, and Fernando Vina. I'm Steve Burke. We'll see you at midnight Eastern time. Sports Center is now.